I'm Nicola Talent and you're watching Crime World, a podcast about criminals, drugs and the underworld in Ireland and across the globe. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you can be the first to watch all our latest episodes. You can also listen wherever you get your podcasts. I feel like I'm the only person not away on a holiday. This weekend, particularly, yeah. or always? No, well, a lot of the time, but when everybody's away. Do you remember when you were a kid yeah. and like it was school holidays and you were looking for something to play with and everybody was away on their holidays? Well, if you That's do go on holidays like anyway, now. there is a major crime story is coming up. So yeah. we do, they are seem to be coordinated, don't they? They do seem to be coordinated, but I really feel left out. You're you've, going... You've, I'm going up to sunny Roscommon this evening, yeah. yeah, for the weekend. Where are you going? I'm going nowhere. I'm well, you don't tomorrow. count. No, <laughs> yeah, you're not. I'm going to continue my most boring man in Europe <laughs> existence. Uh, but anyway, you know, I'm feeling like it's... Well, maybe it'll be a really exciting weekend, actually. Maybe. Who knows? And well, an exciting Who the hell discussion knows? today. And I just want someone to bring me alcohol in the back garden at some point during the weekend, and then I'll be happy. Yeah. Even if it's my children that are forced to do that. I'm sure that can be arranged. In an inappropriate way. Anyway, um, yeah, bank holiday, and we're going to talk about something a little bit different, but something absolutely fascinating, and I'm sure everybody is glued to it. Philip Schofield. Now, this is obviously, um, he has insisted that there has been no crime committed that the relationship he had that any sexual relationship only started when the <clears throat> the guy was 20 and um he there's a couple of curious bits to it mind you that he's paying for his the guy's legal, legal advice yeah. legal team we we were having a little look at this before we came in um but it's really the idea of tv land and what happens if there's a possibility of an offence, yeah, criminal or civil happening, how do they handle it? And what the hell has been going on with ITV and Schofield? I have brought myself down. I am done. I am desperately sorry. But principally, I would like to apologise to him because it may have been consensual, may have been fully legal, but I shouldn't have allowed it to happen. There's a, a lot of a lot of things that I think are said out of hatred for me, but it continues, and it is relentless, and it is day after day after day after day. If you don't think that that is going to have the most catastrophic effect on someone's mind, what do you do? You want me to die? Because that's where I am. I have lost everything. I see nothing ahead of me but blackness and sadness. Well, it seems to be kind of apparent that, as you say, the big companies can brush things under the carpet for long periods mm. of time. Mm. Who knows what else has been uh, hidden in the past, but like there's like to link it into your world, there it's not the omerta of crime la gangland and mafia isn't just exclusive to the criminal underworld. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about it. There's definitely an unspoken, unwritten side to these companies. Yeah. And as we've seen through the years, uh, going back to the the Jimmy Savile days and whatnot, the big the big stations are being made aware of these individuals and tend to act in a way to protect them. Mm. Depending on your status in the company, they are they are willing to coordinate um, people around them to make sure, to ensure that their stars are protected no matter what mm. the rumour is or no matter what the insinuation is from individuals. So this is just the latest one it's, and it's been an incredible week for news mm. and the cycle isn't going to end anytime soon because even this morning the story changed a bit because he gave those interviews yeah. um, on video. Which are amazing. Which yeah. gave some incredible sound bites and a different side to it um, and I actually found some of them a bit... Uh, uh, unnerving to watch just because you kind of, you kind of, we know more that's coming. We know, we know. We know he's lied. Well, he said that from and the I start. That he is I mean, to watch I think there's a couple of things, right? Like the fact is that, that, you know, these things probably do happen in big companies all the time. Obviously when it happens with somebody like Philip Schofield, it becomes, you know, news in a different way than if it happened in a, in a, petrol station or something like that. But I think Philip Schofield's interview, like 
he's very hard to sympathize with him, is it? Like it's it's like, you know. He looks like he's aged about 20 years in the last week. Like he he looks haggard, he looks tired, but that is obviously going to be mm. a, a, a condition of going through what he's been dragged through in the press. But I mean, he didn't come across as sincere. I, I don't know if that's the right word, but I was kind of expecting this. He doesn't come across <clears throat> as sincere. I don't know whether that's because we're I mean, looking at him. That should have been the it. wrong approach as well like you'd wonder like there's a big team behind him mm. these don't just happen like they, they go they run through these and remember of, he's used to being on TV this guy <coughs> 41 and he years how, as he, he knows himself. how to perform so he can perform in any which way maybe he wants in this and um, he I mean for me coming out and he's basically coming out defensive you're going to make me die is what he's saying wasn't there and a it's line, the like, media. But he, meant, he, Caroline Caroline Flack, yeah, he ref, yeah, he references Caroline Flack. Big time it's incredible. Yeah. yeah, it's an incredible thing to do. It's like, what do you want? Do you want me to die, he says. You is see, that the, when you'll be happy? See, the problem with the, his interview is that if you look at Amy Holmes' accusations of him at all, he's a narcissist, he's this, mm. and, you know, those sort of accusations against him, he's self-absorbed and he's, you know careless of other people's feelings and when he did his own interview Philip Schofield to, to an extent it seems to confirm what Eamon Holmes says about him as a person you know then again you have to stand back and say the pressure on him must be absolutely enormous because the level of coverage the story has received is stunning yeah. I mean it's absolutely stunning and that's not to not the, the, the media organizations that are covering it, but like I counted 20 stories on the Daily Mail within the space of two hours mm -hmm. there. Like it is inc an incredible level of interest. And questions are being raised as regards whether or not a crime was committed. There is no evidence as of yet that anything happened, but there are questions being raised in the timeline. So just give us a brief overview of what's happening here in case anybody has been living under a rock and hasn't well, <laughs> hasn't been following it. What we do know is that um, there is a photo of him and uh, Matthew as part of a group at the... Now just explain who Matthew is. Ma so Matthew just is explain the, the story. Sorry, okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah, not go. to go into his second name, I don't think either. But, but yeah. um, so Matthew is a runner on, was a runner on the ITV This Morning show and by being a runner on a massive show like that, he got opportunities to be in front of the camera. So some of the regular viewers will, will have known his face, you know, when you, you get sent off to do a, a, right. a an outside broadcast from okay. some, some local. Um, and so he became part of the, mm. the family. And, right. but then he was out of nowhere. He was promoted to another show within ITV called Lucy At what Women. age? That was just loud. that was recent enough, wasn't it? That yeah, but that was move. recent, yeah. So I mean, he seems to have started there. His, his first appearance on that show was when he was fifteen, after he had met Philip Schofield. He met him initially, and then he'd been in contact with him at the age of fifteen. After yeah, contact, Philip's yeah, social media contact, I think initially. Yeah, so Philip Schofield, I think, had had a, done a, a a talk at his school. After the talk, they made contact with each other on Twitter. I think it was one of the social media sites, Twitter, yeah. and then Philip Schofield had an, invited him to the studio and subsequently he'd ended up working there. Just to interrupt you slightly, that timeline was given to us and that scenario was yeah. given to us by Philip Schofield and he gave it in the interview this morning. Yeah. He said he was mm -hmm. asked to open a drama school by yeah. somebody he knew. He went along. There was a picture of him taken with this young guy, Matthew. Uh, he was asked, would he follow him on Twitter or could he... Yeah, could he follow him on Twitter because he was a fan? He said they had no contact until he was 15, at which time he started saying to him that he wanted a career in television. He was giving him some advice. And eventually he came in on kind of work experience first. And worked his way up. And worked his way up. Yeah. But he came in at 15? Yeah. 15 as a kind of a runner or whatever. And wanted to work in TV. And, and ultimately, Philip Schofield's defense, if you want to call it that, is that no sexual relationship began until a much, I think he's saying 20 years old. He's 20 it? this morning. So, yeah. I mean, obviously, that would that would be mean very clearly there's no sexual offence occurred. You know, it's the age of consent is, is 16, I think, in the UK. However, it does raise the question of, which was put to him directly, are you a groomer? Philip Schofield says, absolutely not. Like, obviously, grooming would be, a, a, you know, whether there's a criminal offence there, it's it's kind of complicated. I mean, we're bringing in our own more complex laws on grooming. But really, it's the sexual act itself 
that would become a criminal offence. So. And before we go any further, just to be correct, because we need to yeah. be correct about this, right? Yeah. He went in on work experience at 15. Yeah. He didn't work his way up from 15. He By 19, he was interested in a career in television and he appears to have gone back at that point to work. So I think his work experience might have been a there brief stint like most. There was a gap, definitely. Yeah. But I mean, you're right, Niall, that, I mean, we have to obviously be careful what we say, but whatever, we're not judging Philip's relationship with them because as we know it, Philip and him had a relationship at an age when he was a legal age. So, mm -hmm. and it was consensual and both parties have made statements to that effect. But there's no doubt about it. It's an abuse of power as well. Mm -hmm. Like from the, like from the very start, like Philip said this morning, he wasn't grooming him, but there's no way that there's no scenario where Philip taking this guy in under his wing, like there's must be tens, hundreds of thousands of people who would, covered that role, yeah. took him in under his wing of, of an age where he was a teenager. Mm -hmm. And obviously the relationship started when he was an adult. But this 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 whole, whole idea, the definition of grooming has become kind of gray area here. And Philip is relying on it. Take that out of it mm. for a second. There's no doubt about it that F Philip has manipulated this situation where he is in a, a position of control and this young lad who idolizes him and idolizes the job and is on set on a live TV broadcast for three hours every morning and just thinks he's the best job ever. Philip took advantage of that mm. situation. for his. I own. mean, it sounds so unwholesome when you're listening to it and, you know, you, you, the idea of a guy of Philip Schofield's status, yeah. you know, a work experience kid coming in and for him to begin a relationship, it is just, it's, it's definitely utterly offensive within the work environment. But if a crime comes in here, if at any point it it is discovered and Philip Schofield has insisted that he has not committed any illegal act, but definitely the grooming and the, the kind of the going back to the beginning of that relationship from the moment that photograph was taken and the Twitter uh, following began, utterly and, and undoubtedly needs to be investigated completely by UTV. Yeah, and I mean, I ITV. suppose... I and, suppose. and if a, a, a com criminal complaint is made, obviously then by the Gardaí, but are the, the police, police yeah. the UK police, but up until a point that any complaint, a criminal complaint is made, the police have no place here, Correct. don't they? Yeah. So this is why it's kind of... Yeah, and look, it's... it's 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 possibly not a criminal issue. Mm -hmm. It's it's probably more an issue to do with like uh, celebrity and to do with abuses of power, which have, you know, come across media organisations, not just ITV, all across all the, the big media companies in America, all the film studios, Harvey Weinstein, all of these things mm -hmm. about people using fame or access to fame to to to. Uh, take advantage of people really who who want to get into that world. It's Robert Ailes as well from Fox, wasn't it? The, yeah, but Roger Ailes, sorry, Ro yeah. Roger Ailes, and then obviously there's you know Harvey Weinstein, all these things where it's the same, you know. And Philip Schofield but, obviously is a, is a different category. But yeah, there is, and but also just but Harvey and Roger were the bosses, right? They yeah. were the top dogs. One of the big issues with this case mm. is that Philip's misdemeanors, let's call them that, or, or unprofessional behaviour, was brushed under the carpet by the bosses. And we're not saying the bosses are, are have committed to this these serious crimes or anything, but they've covered it up. And that's kind of the point, the reason for this. Well, they will they, say they investigated <coughs> it and both he they have and said Matthew that in the past, said like, they had no relationship whatsoever. And I mean, that was two years yeah, ago. And companies have, don't have the same broad powers to say a police force. I mean, if they ask people, do you want to make a, a statement on this? And they don't, they can't you know, enforce them to or do it under caution. So I'm not defending them, but I mean, no, obviously the other, the other reality is like everybody who's worked there has said they knew what was going on. Yeah. yeah. And it was, it's the way companies operate is that this is something that because people won't go on the record with a complaint, we don't have to do anything. I mean, we, that's the way companies can work, even though it's morally not uh, correct. I mean, even you were saying, Dara, that even, Back in 2018, you had heard yes. some, some... very intriguing. Yeah. So, I mean, I kind of took the, the last couple of years regarding Philip Schofield with a pinch of salt because back in 2018, I was on a trip in America and the conversation of the big TV personalities came up. With, this is a press trip kind of thing, is it? Yeah, it was yeah. a press trip. So I found myself speaking with people who I wouldn't normally on, an, on a day-to-day -day basis or didn't even know at the time. But they... Um, so the conversation kind of 
moved into the world of TV and big names like Anton Deck were brought up and there was a few collaborations with them from certain individuals at, in my company. And so that continued on. And then Philip's name came up and it was quite telling that the, the mood changed and certain individuals in this group kind of alluded to the fact that they would never work with Philip Schofield or this morning while Philip was in, in the hot seat. And to me, that seemed strange because he's kind of squeaky clean. Mm -hmm. And at the time he was squeaky clean. He was, uh, I remember him from Gordon, the gopher days on Saturday morning. And um, it was, he was uh, a massive name since the eighties. So I was like, I was kind of surprised by it. And they alluded to the fact that, um, that he was gay. And they, they said that, and at the time he was married with kids. Mm -hmm. And as far as I was aware, and, um, and I said, are you sure? And they said, oh no, no, we're, we're, we're absolutely sure. And I said, okay. And I, but that's, that's not why you're not working with them, obviously. Like, yeah. and they said, oh yeah, but there's, there's other things going on there. And they didn't want to get into it, but they said that they just would feel very uncomfortable working with them. And then fast forward to 2020 and Philip Schofield came out mm -hmm. very publicly. It was a big deal. Um, I remember the wave of support on Twitter and social media. What a brave decision it was um, to um, for a married man with grown up kids to yeah. finally own up to his feelings and sexuality in such and a public figure at that. But what I found and because I knew already. Yeah. So I was looking at it. Slightly differently. And what I found remarkable at the time is that none of the big high profile gay men and women on social media came out supporting him. And if they did, it was not mm -hmm. it was not this huge wave that we saw from regular Twitter folk who were just amazed that uh, a married man could finally admit to this and were trying to support him. Obviously, Holly on screen supported him and said, I'll always be by your side, held his hand. And Eamon and Ruth were brought in for a kind of a cringy hug, hug photo, yes, um, yeah. which has come back this week in a big way. But at the time, it was fairly obvious that big media personalities who were well known and uh, were openly gay weren't necessarily jumping mm -hmm. to his support. And I think that is as a direct result of the rumours that I had heard two years earlier mm -hmm. being way more widely known than just this little circle of 12 people around the table in America two years earlier. And behind the scenes at that time in 2020, he was being questioned, as was Matthew being questioned, about the relationship. That so, timeline ties in, does it? So I believe. I, I, I don't know for well, sure. I think there was, the, I think, uh, I think the, the, like, you know, we don't work over there, but the idea was that people in the media were asking him. No, ITV, yeah. I think, Do you mean questioned yeah. internally. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and also externally, I think. You know what I mean? But the internal investigation was underway at that point. I didn't a few people like Dan Wooten and a few people, as they left ceremoniously, lobbed out some allegations. Mm. And I think that instigated yeah. a couple of investigations within the company, all right, which came to nothing. There were statements made by them. Eamon Holmes has said that the investigation was simply, are you in a relationship? No. Are you in a relationship? No. And that was the end see of it. it. See you tomorrow morning. Whereas um, if you look at Philip Schofield's interviews this morning, he says that it was quite a robust uh, interview process that he was asked a number of times and that Matthew was taken aside a number of times and, and asked questions. Mm -hmm. Both of them, he said at that point, denied it. But the him uh, coming out as gay while still in a marriage, what was the explanation that was given at that time for him doing that, making that decision. Well, wasn't the talk, I don't know what, Niall might remember it more, but I would remember think or hearing that uh, a paper was about to... Well, I think there was. I mean, I thought, look, we don't know because we don't yeah. work over there, but that was the suggestion that somebody, that he had received queries, like formal queries from media organisations asking about his private life, asking about his sexuality, and that he had decided to come out publicly in advance of that and tell it in his own, mm -hmm. his own way. So... You know, obviously, if Dara had heard those on a casual press trip in 2018, by mm. 2020, they must the, have the, snowballed even more. Yeah, and I mean, they would have been rife and obviously somebody had approached it. Um, so, you know, he, he was obviously given a lot of uh, love and support when he came out. But a lot of that now, people, you know, it's all over social media, that that was accusing that of being a manipulative scenario, mm. you know, that... that um, that, you know, that was a way in which to push these other questions away from him. And that, you know, it does, when you look at it now, you know, 
it looks insincere. Maybe that's unfair, but that's how it, a lot of it looks. And I obviously, think hindsight in, allows us to, yeah, to yeah, see yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, whether it's fair or not, it doesn't look great no. when you look back at that footage, which is replayed again and again. And obviously, Eamon Holmes then um, has, you know, he's given a, a open and frank account, is it, of, uh, you know, I want his to version. to a little bit of what Eamon Holmes has to say because he is definitely the. Become an extremely colourful character and all this he and has. he's very strong <clears throat> in relation to Schofield and what he has he to say. The chief narcissist, he is a complete and uttered dyed in the wool narcissist. Everything is about him. Why were there no changes? Why was there no retribution? Because of the management around him, the people mm. who tolerated these things that went on. And when there was talk of um, Philip having a relationship with a young man, that young man was, in inverted commas, promoted. I didn't know, but I've subsequently found out from a very, very good source because he would arrive much earlier in the morning mm. than I would for the programme, that he was delivered from Philip's London home, mm. uh, usually on a Friday morning, uh, because Thursday was playtime uh, when he and Philip would hit the town. And, uh, and then he obviously stayed overnight and there are records to show that he was brought in the next day separately. In cars the, paid for by ITV. In cars paid for by ITV. Well, so the management would have had to have known about that? Uh, they? Unless Philip paid the bill separately but it would still have to go through the accounts office mm. that they would have seen that and known that. Oh. Yes, it's a, it's a total cover-up. It's a total cover-up. So there you have Eamon Holmes and um, you know he, he's certainly not mincing his words. Not at all. It's actually great uh, copy for yeah, <laughs> websites and newspapers. My God, and lying. like it's. I actually um, like. I, I kind of they they were moved aside, Damon and, and Ruth, and so he's got a chip in his shoulder. There's no doubt about it. Um, like anyone who was treated badly by Philip Ward this morning, like you've got Jody Marsh coming out because Jody Marsh was accused of something by Philip. Uh, Kerry Katona was accused of being high on screen and, and Philip, but do you remember the interview where Philip leans over and goes, are you on something? Or mm -hmm. he kind of alluded to her being drunk on the during the interview. She's come out. So anyone with a minor chip on their shoulder all of a sudden has this mm. support and they're coming out and Dan Wooten is willing to interview them for TV yeah. over there in the UK. And it, so this is now gathering pace, whether they're all credible uh, is one thing or another but you take that with a pinch of salt but the Eamon Holmes stuff because he was in that role um, has given the most yeah, well, Eamon, like Eamon Holmes in fairness to him is, is stand behind what he's saying you know and he like he is certainly saying that 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 he felt manipulative or manipulated when he at that point in which he he participated in, in Philip Schofield coming out and all that now, he's also quite categorically saying that the uh, individual at the centre of this, Matthew, the young guy who came in on his work experience and was later in a relationship with him, that he was troubled. Yeah, and damaged and, and by the experience is what he's... And, mo and more than that, he talks yeah. about, uh, he talks about him needing a lot of money, um, spending a lot of money, being constantly kind of in financial difficulties, yeah. speaking... Um, and how his life is difficult now, you know. Speaking so to Eamon and his wife about his problems, coming to them a lot, very troubled during and about this relationship with Schofield, Schofield, there's a certain feeling that there's a huge amount more in the background here that possibly will come out. Yeah, I mean, look, and but what has come out is obviously that that young man, like, has suffered because of what mm -hmm. has happened. And, you know, it's not, uh, it may not, as he says, it was unwise but not illegal, is Philip Schofield's yeah. novel defence, but there's no doubt that the person who's, 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 being a victim and and suffered and whose life will change forever is that young man in question. So it's, it's you know, these things maybe have always happened in, in, in the showbiz world, but I suppose the culture of, of the culture has changed now where yeah. people understand that these sort of abuses of power, whatever way you look at it, do have consequences. So we as journalists often do hear these things before mm -hmm. anything breaks. We hear about the, the rumours that go around media, television, yeah. state, e even here in Ireland. And some, uh, you know, allegations that are made against people and people in show business have never seen the light of the day no. and there's never been any truth behind them. And some of them have been very severe criminal allegations have been made against people. But in other cases... And of course, yeah, there are cases, many cases of things that have been true and have never come to light as well. Mm -hmm. And I suppose in 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 uh, the case of somebody who is in the public eye, um, 
rumors are very damaging. They can be more damaging than they can be for somebody who is not. And, you know, there's two ways of looking at it. Either the television stations can handle it internally, can shut it down if there's nothing to see here, or they can do the exact opposite, which is throw the baby out with the bathwater nearly. Yeah. And and that did happen in the case of Al Porter here, I think. Yeah, but cancel culture is one of those things that um, it, it's a it's a scary side to social media. Um, sometimes the right target can be taken down if like we we're we're restricted. News news websites and papers are restricted by ridiculous laws here in Ireland, where we can't necessarily print something that we know to be true unless we have evidence. But on social media, there aren't those rules, so. Allegations can be made on social media and targeting individuals and whether it's true or not, as we know, it can be fake news and um, can can cancel someone for and not destroy the wrong careers. reason completely. But if 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 the if the right person is targeted on occasions, uh, it, is there a good side to cancel culture? I, I don't know if I'm coming across right, but there are some people it does warrant this pile on, as they call it, on social mm. media where people just keep going and make sure that this individual doesn't get work and um, it's really it's a really hard one to avoid and to uh it can absolutely cripple a career there's no doubt about it yeah it's a, it's a scary time at the moment because of that when you think about the like the cancel culture the positive would have been had it been around during jimmy savile's yeah, day no, yeah. and people were able to anonymously come yeah, out it's, and it's too simple to say there's these you know, pylons are wrong i mean most of the me too movement some and many of those people who've ended up admitting their offences or some of them ending up in prison. I mean, most of them are driven by social Correct, media. Yeah, absolutely. So it's not as simple to say these things are, are you know, they're wrong. But obviously then there, there have been other cases where people have been unjustly accused. And yeah, Jimmy Savile, I mean, Jimmy Savile, like, I mean, by all accounts, it was absolutely open mm -hmm. secret. Everybody mm -hmm. who worked in television knew uh, and he continued to get away with it. Because him. he kept making the money and bringing in the Yeah, figures. he was star. He was he such was, a star. He was this sort of... But that's the kind of, obviously, and we keep saying this, Philip Schofield hasn't committed a crime yet, but this is the culture that's in these TV stations. And one of the things, I know we kind of moved on from Schofield, but one of the things that I think is quite telling is um, the doctor who was phased out. So um, uh, Dr. Ranj Singh was a regular contributor on that show, but he voiced his concerns. Mm. Um, I think it was 2019 he voiced them initially. And... Such as the 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 atmosphere there that the ITV bosses managed him out is mm -hmm. how it was done because the he he pushed he mentioned the bullying and the toxic atmosphere behind the cameras and on set which he was he could see with his eyes for for years that he was contributing and as soon as he voiced his opinion they decided he needs to be phased out yeah. not take on this problem and that's going on in stations. Uh, radio stations, TV stations, and corporate all, corporations all over the world. Like it's it's crazy to think that the star power, as you say, is being protected. And if you're a little bit lower down, there was another comedian who was phased out, or he was just never hired again, a contributor because he made a, a joke that didn't go well. It was there was a little bit of um, it caught a bit of uh, flack on Twitter, and so ITV just got rid of him straight away. There was no defense of him at all. He was mm. a regular contributor and no defense at all. But then you make these serious allegations about their star player. And like, oh, no, we're going to forget about that. We're just going to move it on. And just when we're still on that, Holly Willoughby, what is going to happen to her? Well, is she a career uh, left? Yeah, I think so. I, 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 Look, it depends what comes out, but I actually kind of feel sorry for her. She's kind of been tarnished with this brush. Now, if she knew and she kept her mouth shut, of course, there, there should be repercussions and she's got that own, her own guilt. Um, but she is almost being tarnished with the exact same brush as Philip Schofield at the moment mm. in, in some quarters of, of social media. And he says she didn't know. Again. Yeah, See, and, but I, I, I think I think she's going to be ruined by it, I, I have to too. say. I think she's a goner. You know, and I think, there's, there's, and I do think, actually think, even if she did have a knowledge or a rumour, like what is she meant to do as a as a as as another employee like you know mm. or just say she had a good root a good heard all them rumors but i mean i don't think she can recover because i don't think i think her whole persona is based on being a lovely girl yeah type of thing. i get that but do you, do you think know? by her not returning from this two weeks sabbatical as dermot and allison alluded to earlier in the week it kind of implies that she kind of a bit of guilt like do you think no, she, I, I think she should show up on monday week I, and take it on and just see how, see how the, the, read the room, find the mood of the nation and see if they, 
they accept her back well, in with her She's been accused room. of being a kind of a bit of a bully too by Eamon Holmes. He has said that both of them there never were, spoke yeah. to anybody in the corridors. Both of them had this air around them that nobody was to approach them and nobody was to speak to them. And he's talking about a general toxicity that yeah. existed because of them. Um, well, if that is true, um, I mean, I mean, again, not a crime, but just you know, a bad I mean, work exactly. environment. You know and what in mean? front of just, see well, the problem for for her and for Philip Schofield is like that's their their images. They're really yeah. really nice, sincere, decent, yeah. sort of great people, really easy going. It's so they nice can just sit down when, and have a cup the, of tea. Those like, myths are are absolutely luckily, like for somebody like like you know some other people who are like you know don't have that persona. It's it's it but wouldn't be remember. as damaging, but it's super damaging for her because it's girl yeah. next door. They, were t- they turned up drunk that morning. Do you remember after the national? television awards a few years ago yeah. and it was like the greatest TV show of all yeah, time. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. they were like untouchable. Um, yeah. yeah, maybe you're right. I There's a bit of me that wants her to come back and to just to tackle this but I don't know whether I'm... Some years back Jeremy Kyle also on ITV yeah. was cancelled after a, a guest on his show um, died tragically in, in the days after being yeah. featuring on it and a lot of stories emerged about another toxic environment within that show and about people working on it being treated very badly. There was all sorts of suggestions that uh, guests were picked probably because of their, you know, their vulnerabilities, that they'd make better TV. All of that happened. Uh, Jeremy Kyle's on his way back to telly. Yeah, he is. Yeah. You know, sometimes a gap can, can, what they say, time makes us forget. But I mean, Jeremy Kyle, like nobody was shocked he wasn't. (laughs) He wasn't the loveliest guy, were they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's not, true. It's a bit not. different. So it yeah. is a bit different, I think. Yeah. So and look, I do feel I do feel a bit sorry for it. Actually. Let's talk about other people who have found themselves in the eye of this storm and what's happened and, and you know what what happened and what sort of came of them. And Al Porter being yeah. kind of one of the most sort of famous, I suppose, here in Ireland. There was it was unbelievable. For about a year, year and a half prior to him being cancelled, he went from a decent middle of the road comedian, working, clubbing, jobbing comedian to being having a two or three hour show on Today FM primetime radio slot. And he like he, he had done some cover for slots. All of a sudden he is the main man in there. He was presenting Blind Date on, I think it was TV3 at the time, Virgin yeah. Media. He, it, like Meaty Eric Royce doesn't even do it right. He was just the golden boy. He could not do wrong. Everything he touched turned to gold. Everyone loved him. And um, he came out of now. I remember at the time when he got that radio slot, um, there were massive names being lined up for it and they went with Al Porter over it. Everything was mm. going amazingly and within a couple of months, the House of Cards just came crumbling down for him when um, text messages uh, were leaked uh, showing conversations that he had had with individuals. Um, and again, that led to, I remember the individual, um, I think he works for RTE now, uh, went onto Twitter and basically decided I need to tell you what what Al did to me or and how he treats people, detailed it in a in a thread, and then the pylon came. But it wasn't a pylon from people who didn't know about the stories. It was people who said, oh yeah, I've had similar experiences. More and more people came out about stories about him and really quickly the carpet was pulled from underneath him. Mm. And um so Al Porter was actually brought to court and charged with sexually assaulting a young man in this Dublin venue. And um, while no reason was given publicly for the decision to drop the case, you can conclude there wasn't enough evidence to go ahead with a trial in the case. Yeah. And and he spoke afterwards and and he said, you know, he was relieved that his sort of nightmare ordeal was over. Yeah, the DPP withdrew the case. So mm. he, he walks out of court, an innocent man, you yeah. know, there's no doubt about that. Like, but obviously then what continues on for him is not, is, is, the, the overhang of what he yeah. was accused of and the allegations that were in the public arena already. Um, so he didn't reappear then in the public eye for an extended period of time, although he spoke at the time. It's only in recent months, really, that he has, he came out again, spoke about how he'd had to made every single change to his life, he took ownership for for some, of, some misbehavior, spoke about... Uh, his use of alcohol excessively mm. and now he has started reappearing and doing shows again um in recent months he's booked a lot of shows which are which are been selling out as well mm. yeah they're like i mean 
not to dismiss it completely, they're small enough venues I think yeah. he's aiming for and maybe that is the right tactic to take here. He's, he's got a long road ahead of him because some of this has stuck with him. I know he's he's um, an innocent man, but these allegations have stuck. Mm. And, and when you think about where he went from to this, um, it's it, there's a long road ahead for him anyway, definitely. You'd wonder in a way psychologically, is there a sort of a, a, a living in that bubble and, you know, everywhere you go, people, you know, coming up looking to get photographs. Mm. They're going into these television stations at their own change rooms. They can treat, they can treat people whatever yeah. way they want as long as they're getting the ratings in certain organisations. But do they sort of get this sense of untouchability sort of akin to what we talk I, about? I think with Al our Porter was a very criminal. young man when he became yeah, he was. famous. I think that is very, very uh, hard for people yeah. not to take to it grasp, seriously yeah. because what does it mean but that be? sort of sense of untouchability yeah. that we see a lot within the criminal underworld yeah. we see sort of a lot of these sort of significant figures sort of slightly start to lose their touch with reality and some of them the likes of what happened with Jeremy Clarkson was extraordinary yeah I, I like I mean the stories I hear I mean I, I was joking in the paper there a few weeks ago when I was doing a, a piece for the 50th birthday about how if you think the stories that get into the paper bonkers you'd want to hear some of the stories that don't get into the paper because like you you do hear regularly of uh, kind of this atmosphere of bullying yeah in massive TV shows and radio shows and um, from big names uh, some of them have got their come up and so right in one way or another whether it's just been a reduced profile or show but but some of them are still working and jobbing and and you know you can there's mm. a conveyor belt of people working underneath them because people aren't staying staying they're not sticking with them because they know that atmosphere of the toxicity and the the bullying they can't cope with it and mm. you're right and i think some of them didn't become famous young some of them worked harder that you hear um and like some of them are household names there is definitely a sense of entitlement and notions and they can treat people however however they feel um, and one of them as you mentioned is Jeremy Clarks and he it, he has this persona that people in the various jobs he's worked in papers and TV shows and st stations apparently he is a very tough person to work with and for yeah. and um, I'm sure uh, between his his kind of rent a quote columns um, and his antics, he was putting the Top Gear legal team through their, their, um, their the getting rent. the bang for yeah. book for right over twenty years. But then it all came to a head um, a couple of years ago when he um, he lashed out at a young producer, an Irishman actually, Oisín Tymon was his name. Uh, they were doing some broadcast outside of the studio and whatever he ordered steak and. The, the soup and cold meat platter that Oshin brought him wasn't good enough. So Jeremy berated him, called him a lazy Irish, see you next Tuesday, and then punched him. Mm. And um, then criminal charges were brought against like him. Civil proceedings, we found. Yeah, it? and a uh, 100,000 payout was given. Yeah. So, um, but like, but like there's notorious egos there mm -hmm. and he is just one of them uh, whether you like his shows or not uh, working for him is, is tough yeah. by all accounts yeah so the BBC axed him they lose they, their shows they lose their income um, but you know you'd wonder for that one Oisin you know time and have there been but there's plenty of others yeah, there who, but there's who no advertising as well in the BBC don't forget so they're mm. not they're not losing massive sponsors right they're not losing multi-million ad deals they're just cutting their star. They mm -hmm. know that. Now, I know they syndicate it and there's a lot of money in Top Gear and they still make money out of it. So they, it's it's it just seems to be never ending the money that comes in from Top Gear. But they were able to cut him quite quickly because of that, for that very reason. They didn't have to answer to... It's a smaller, much smaller celebrity circuit here. I mean, it's it is. tiny yeah. compared to the UK. You'd wonder, would people be able to get away with things? I think they would. I think they, they have. I think <laughs> they will. I think they're protected by defamation laws in this country. Mm -hmm. I think the same damaged people with something wrong with them want to become famous in Ireland as they do in the UK. Maybe mm -hmm. their playground's a bit smaller. Yeah. There's all sorts of stuff gone on. You know, I totally believe that. You can't get into some of it, but that's the way it goes. And like... You know, I met a, a guy there I, met, I knew the other day. He's an accountant and he was telling me how much money he's earning and he works not very hard, you know. And I was thinking, well, it should become an accountant. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Because that's a better life. But the people who want to become famous, there's something maybe a bit off with them, isn't there? Do you well, not think well, so? Well, many of them. I mean, there's many wealth of them. there, though, as a kind of a, you know, there is wealth as a draw. But but I think the draw, though, some of the draw, for some people, not every famous person, but some yeah. of them is to be, to get a big boost, a narcissistic boost. Yeah, yeah for and sure. And then when people like that get that boost, 
they tend to treat other people badly. Mm -hmm. You can tell and a lot from these celebs when you're like, when we were, we were doing mag shoots, for example, through the years and you get to spend a few hours with them and they have, they have hair and makeup, they have stylists, they have photographers, they have, they have a, at least six or seven people waiting on them hand and foot and one of us, a one of the journalists there waiting to do the interview and just manage the whole thing. Like they're the center of attention. They are the talent and they can still treat us all like utter shit. It's like, like ourselves, man. No, no. Well, you see, this is the thing. It is a bit like ourselves, Nicola. Like why, why would you want to be a journalist? Except if there's something wrong with you. Do you know? That's my belief. You know, that's my belief. No, I know. And I agree with you. And there yeah. is something. I mean, I am absolutely hands up. There's something yeah. wrong with me. No, like exactly. Loads of things wrong with me. Yeah. And, and that, Honestly, that's the people that are attracted to high profile positions, politicians, yeah. journalists, yeah. rock stars. There's always something a bit off them and journalists. Yeah. But Ireland, put my hand up. <clears throat> so we do have an ego with journalists. There's no doubt about it, but yeah. we don't, you don't have to be, you no, don't you have don't to have like to be an there, but some people, but you, yeah. everyone around no, you, you don't, don't just, but you, no matter see, how high up you get. but you see it in media companies, you see people rise up just, just a tiny little bit and all of a sudden they start treating people badly and that's because they're, they're broken. Does that happen in every industry? It probably in does, but I mean, I yeah. worked I worked as a computer programmer and it doesn't happen as much in there as it does in media. Can companies. you believe you worked as a computer programmer? Not, it wasn't Can't. a good computer oh, a Great journalist, of course, but yeah. it was a mediocre <laughs> computer program. Mediocre journalist. Yeah. <laughs> so where do you think, um, look, we're just fascinated with this story, but where do you think Dan, Dan Wooden and Eamon Holmes are going to go, go next? Go next. <laughs> like, seriously, where are they going to go next? I do, I have to <clears> say, go. I like their... I like their head on a plate. It's, ta it's tabloid gonna, TV, if, though, isn't it? It's just yeah. yeah but if you're gonna, yeah, if you're gonna go and be a hitman, yeah, they're good hitmen, aren't they? They are. They I are. I mean, they're taking they're them well, out. They're not. They are taking them out. They are not going to let yeah. him get back. Not, exactly. In actual fact, I was surprised when I saw him trying to make his his comeback, which yeah. you know, I didn't feel sympathy for no. him. He was talking about being at his lowest ebb. I should have. He was yeah. talking about, you know, his children, his grown up yeah. children having to protect him and stay by his true, side. Though. It's undoubtedly true, Every minute pressure. of the day of says he doesn't do anything and whatever. You should feel sympathy, but instead I just felt fake. You're well, fake. there's a difference between yeah. being, feeling bad because you got caught, I suppose, and feeling bad That's because you did something yeah. because you did something wrong. There is like it's natural if somebody, you know, if if you talk to somebody, Nicola, that done terrible things in the criminal world and you can talk to them and see that they actually feels feel bad for what they did but there's other people who just feel bad because they got caught mm. and it's embarrassing or whatever and oh, like uh, there's yeah. a bit of that from philip schofield where there's not that self-awareness even though he's mouthing the words about this poor man and all of that but really he, he's feeling but primarily. do you think that it should be just left with his as being the final word i mean we're not going to call Matthew his victim as such because no. he's it, they were in a, know, he's a man and they were obviously both of the, the age of consent. <clears throat> but he is providing him with legal assistance yeah. and mm -hmm. with legal advice through his money. And you wonder, is there a place for an outside agency to step in and to make sure that there was nothing criminal? But they have on? brought in a barrister, I think, ITV. Have they an independent barrister to investigate it? So, I mean, I suppose they are taking that step where he's going to analyze the, the the investigation that was done before and speak to what, what people were there. And even, you know, for Philip Schofield, like there has to be an end point of the coverage. I'm not saying, it, you know, newspapers should be barred from writing about it, but it does have to get to an end point as well, unless something new comes out. Or ultimately you have to get to the bottom of whether or not yeah. he was grooming yeah. a, a young But you mean that might never... We won't know unless Matthew goes public. No, but even and, if he does, you know, it's it, the reality is it's well, a, there could be it's a, a kind of an electronic uh, evidence there left there. there. I mean, however, though, is it going to like? Is it really? It's just it's a, a thing that is that has occurred. That's not going to be a criminal thing. Just merely being in contact with a fifteen-year-old or whatever. Like, you know, well, like, that's what Philip Schofield said, that just yeah. by being in contact with the 15 year old and by giving him advice on his career, that isn't a crime. But I think when you take the full picture together, when you yeah. put all the threads together and you realize that he went on yeah. to give this what was a 15 year yeah. old, gave him a chance at his career, got him into a position where he likely mightn't have got without that and then had a sexual relationship with him. You know, it's slightly different than just giving a 15 year old a little bit of 100 percent, 100 percent. Like he obviously, Philip Schofield had this guy's future in his in his in his hands. He took him under his wing. He gave him he gave him 
this experience that he probably wouldn't have got otherwise. And like that is an, an abuse of power down for where Absolutely. that relationship ultimately went. And if you had, you know, every, we're all parents, if you send your kids somewhere, you know, young teenage kids as for work experience, the idea that's, that, that that would lead to something like it did for this young man would be horrifying. I think. So frightening mm. to think about that. Yeah. But you're right. You are right. It, it, look, this won't, this isn't going to be finished by the time, by the weekend. This is, this is going to run and run. More stuff might come out, whether Matthew himself ever goes public is to be seen. But um, they did say there's no NDA this morning in those interviews. Well, Philip certainly alluded to the fact that mm -hmm. he didn't insist on an NDA uh, despite paying for the legal um, yeah. representation. So we'll just have to wait and see. But But ultimately, this kind of stuff is happening and um, it's being the stars are being are being molly coddled the troubles the insinuations are being brushed under the carpet and um this this like unfortunately it's going on but maybe maybe with social media and these pylons and the cancel culture things might be, get caught a bit earlier okay well look i look forward to reading the next chapter of this i can't yeah. sort of help myself so um okay so for today guys thank you very much thanks very much thank you